Hello! Welcome to another episode of my knitting podcast. My name is Umbriel. Yeah, welcome to the Man Knitwear YouTube channel. I make a lot of videos and recently I have been on a huge kick of getting rid of my acrylic yarn. So um, yeah, we're just starting the knit along. So if you want to join in and also make something with your acrylic yarn stash, then please join. I'll uh, talk about it a little bit more later in my podcast. Um, for today, uh, it is a beautiful Saturday. It's the 5th of August when I'm filming this and uh, there is a huge techno festival going on <laughs> right uh, next to my house, basically on the other side of the bridge. Um, so if you hear any noise in the background, um, I'm sorry, I tried it out and it didn't sound like you could hear anything. So I hope that will be the case for the whole episode. But if you do hear it, I'm very sorry. <laughs> All right, um, let's just get started because I have uh, a lot to show you. I actually thought I didn't have that much to show, but then I picked everything, put everything together and I realized, okay, I do have a lot. It seems to be that case all the time, but that's okay. Um, I have my laptop here in case I need to find anything. And then some of my finished objects are right behind it. So I'm going to start out with a finished object and that are these socks. I wasn't sure if I already finished them in the previous episode because um, I finished them so soon after that and I've been wearing them a bunch. So these are just um, made up pattern so i did them i have to think what i did um i i did them toe up <laughs> so uh i started them at the toe and i talk about them a lot in my previous podcast episode uh, so i don't want to bore the people who watch all of them to uh talk about it again but i did finish the second sock and i really like how different they stripe and also they're going in the opposite direction. So I re um, wound the yarn in a cake, but the other way, and I knew I was doing that. So basically here it repeats, if that makes sense. So this one goes this way and then this one goes the other way. I don't know if this, if you can see this, maybe it's the best in the foot to show it there here. You see pretty well so i think that's pretty cool um i did that intentionally and actually this these socks are made with the yarn that i made uh my first ever sock with but i never finished the pair so uh yeah i think it's really cool and i did an afterthought heel and i have a tutorial on afterthought heel so if you're interested in watching or knowing how that um, works, <laughs> then you can check out my tutorial. And I have a sock pattern out that's called the Kirsten Bosch socks that also uses uh, afterthought heel. But the most fun thing about these socks is the cuff. I did a long cuff with um, like mock cables uh, before binding off. So, and I did a Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off, which is a YouTube tutorial. And I really like them. Wear them all the time, like in the house. I never really wear socks, hand knitted socks and shoes. Cause whenever I go out the house, I feel like I walk that so much that it's like almost too painful to have on my feet. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's the garter garter bumps on the inside that hurt my feet uh, if I walk in them a lot and especially when they're in shoes and they're like compressed to my feet. Um, but I did learn that it is nicer to... Um, sorry, brain fog or something. Uh, I did learn that... Um, so right now I'm using uh, more ease so I okay <laughs> let's restart 
I changed the way that I'm using negative ease on my socks for myself. So I used to really make socks that had a lot of negative ease, so they would be super tight. And now I'm kind of slowly going into uh, having a little bit less negative ease, so they're a little less tight on my feet, but I still have negative ease. So I'm trying to figure out what works for me. Uh, I think really it's a personal preference. If you'd like them to be snug, um, or what you prefer so yeah that's one finished object and then now i am going to talk about my acrylic yarn because i have two finished objects for my latest part of my acrylic uh, stash down videos so if you haven't seen it which i do think a lot of people haven't because youtube sometimes doesn't really like to show <laughs> some videos for some reason so if you haven't watched it i'll put in a link and um, you can watch that before I'll show you because it's more fun, I think, to watch the whole process. So I did a crochet project and a knitting project in that podcast, and they're both finished. So the crochet project is this bag um, with crocheted mushrooms on it. And it's granny squares, like just circular granny squares, and I made into like it was a circle and then you make a, a square around it and the mushrooms are applied onto it. So they're not crocheted into the circle. Um, yeah, and I used four different colors for the mushrooms. And I like to nickname this one as my eggs with mushrooms bag. So that's pretty cute, I think. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry by Ra Rachel Feenstra. I'm not sure if she's Dutch, but it sounds pretty Dutch to me, the last name. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it's super nice. It's really big. Uh, I talk about it a lot more <laughs> in that uh, vlog. So if you're interested in knowing more and about the process, then I would like to refer you to that video. And then secondly, in my third part of the acrylic stash down videos i introduced this blanket that i've been working on and in my last part i decided to turn it into a scarf so it's a really nice long scarf that can wrap around me two times and i really like the effect that it has so if this would have been a blanket it would have been a huge blanket because it's so long. I actually haven't measured it, but I put it on top of our bed and we have a king size bed and it came down this much on either side. So super long and it's really nice and uh, comfy. And yeah, what else can you say about it? <laughs> I uh, talk about it a little more in that same vlog or yeah, like I take you into the process of knitting these two projects. So the plan is with the knit along or crochet along, if you're a crocheter, you can join as well. So the idea of the knit along came from uh, the fact that I had a lot of acrylic yarn that I bought when I got back into knitting um, about three years ago. And I bought a lot of acrylic yarn Plus, I inherited a lot of yarn from my mom's grandmother, who knitted mainly with acrylic yarn. And now that I have been knitting for a while, I noticed that I prefer natural fibers, mostly, over um, non-natural fibers. And then mostly for knitting garments, because I know if they're in my armpit or all the other places, it can get smelly. <laughs> then I don't really like using acrylic. I still have a lot of acrylic yarn left and I want to use it instead of just throwing it away. So I have decided for myself to make a series where I knit functional and pretty pieces with my acrylic yarn to hopefully inspire other people to also use up their acrylic yarn because it's definitely very, very useful fiber and it's still uh, beautiful to knit with, as you can see in the pieces that I just finished, uh, and my other pieces from my um, series. 
So if you also have a lot of acrylic yarn left that you're like, what am I gonna do with it? Please join. The knit along will last at least till the end of the year. I'm not sure yet. I don't have any prices yet, but I am talking to someone over on Instagram who is excited to join to host this knit along. So um, we're talking about uh, what we could do for potential prices. So please join in and um, yeah, make sure to watch all those parts to see what uh, you can knit or yeah. You can also just watch them for fun. I mean, I really like uh, watching Knitting Fox anyway, so you can also do that. So that's the knit along. Then I want to uh, talk about something that I had forgotten to talk about in my last part. So I was knitting on, or I have been frantically knitting on this um, shirt. It's like a, a long sleeved t-shirt, I guess. And it has this pretty cable. I hope you can see that. And it has these beautiful decreases down the front and down the back. So the front and the back are actually identical. So it doesn't really matter which side I put first. And when I put it on, it fits super nicely. And then it gets kind of tight because there's a lot of decreases and I'll show you the wrong way around. So this is knitting towards the bottom. Um, oh, it is the Sassy Cable Shirt by Anne-Catherine. Um, and I have uh, knitted until here. And now I'm debating whether or not I have too many or yeah, I did too many decreases. So I am knitting this size large, which does give me a lot of negative ease. But then when I put it on, I have a lot of room over here around the bust area. But then you decrease like around under your bust, you start decreasing. And then it gets super like, um, you do so many decreases that it was almost like you can see how far apart these stitches are spread like it's even flaring a little bit and this is like a super small cord right so yeah i'm just like i don't know what to do basically that's that's <laughs> what my conclusion is so my plan is to uh start the sleeves and then probably frog back a little bit of the dec decreases because it just like fits nicer if I do it in a different way. I am knitting this on a 3.25 millimeter needles uh, in this yarn. This is Knitting for Olive. Oh, it blows out all the way. Okay, it's Knitting for Olive Merino in navy which is my favorite color and i feel like it suits me really well <laughs> um i love the yarn um i do think though it's so pricey i do think it's i mean it's really nice yarn but for the price i think i wouldn't buy it anymore but i do like the cotton merino but I think for the Merino, there's a lot of other alternatives that are cheaper. So that's an interesting one to keep into account if you're interested in knowing any of that. But I did talk about this in, I think, podcast 13. I talked about these bear paw socks. And I am using a 3.25 for my bear paw socks, which are the same needle that I was using for that shirt and then the second sock for this one was never casted on because i needed a 3.25 millimeter for the other project that i just showed you the sassy cable shirt so then when all of that happened and i was just not really working on it because i didn't know what to do i thought okay i'm just gonna put them on um stitch holders and I'm gonna cast on the second sock. So I casted this sock on three days ago and this 
morning, I made the heel. So here's the second sock for this one. So as you can see, I am almost finished. So here, that's how long this one is. And then I only need to do from here to here. Um, and I did all the thinking parts for the flegal heel. Um, so this, these are the bear paw socks, and this is uh, one of them for my boyfriend, a pair of them for my boyfriend. I already made another pair and he really likes them, although they're a little too big. So I made the biggest size for him the first time because he has very large feet. Um, so I made the 11 size, which is the biggest one. And this time I made the 10 size and he tried them on and it fits super well. So that's really nice. And yeah, I think it looks super nice. I really like it with the um, cell striping yarn. So the yarns that I'm using is this blue yarn, as you can see here in the stripe and in the flegal heel. And I'm using this variegated yarn that's in my cozy, which I test crocheted for Nitty Natty. Um, yeah, I think those colors are just super pretty and I like the way that they look together. Oh, I didn't say what this was. This yarn is from Hobby. It's their four ply sock yarn, just their main rainbow color or something, just like the main sock yarn for Hobby. I put everything in like all my yarn and needle information, I always put in my Ravelry project pages. And I link those down below all of the time, by the way. I never mention that, but I do see that people watch, like look at my projects. So I know some of you watch there, <laughs> look on there, but not a lot. So, but now everybody knows. And then this yarn, I lost the label. So I don't know uh, what yarn it is. I bought it on Hobby one time, I think. Maybe I can look up what yarn it is because then there would be a record of it. So I might try to look that up, but it's really cool. It's really, it's like a, it's not plied or something. No, it's not plied. It's like a one ply and it's like really fuzzy. And I think it's a really good idea to hold a double. So I'm holding it either double with itself over here and all the way at the end, or I'm holding it together with a light blue strand. Um, and these are, I mean, this is the only DK weight sock that I've ever knit, but I love this pattern so much. You start with a toe up, just like the self-drafted sock pattern there with a Turkish cast on. And I raved about this in my previous podcast, but I'm going to do it again. I love a Turkish cast on. And this pattern is what converted me to doing a Turkish cast on. It's so much nicer than a Judy's Magic cast on, but I already said that. So you do that, then you uh, increase for the toe, and then you do a two by two, and then you start increasing for the flegal heel, then you work the flegal heel, and then you do two by two again, and then you do a stripe here, and then you do um, like of the blue yarn, of the contrast yarn, and then you do uh, only the main color yarn. And there's a few things that I do differently, and it has to do with doing a, a make one left or make one right, because Andrea in her pattern for the increases at the toe, she says to like start with, well, she says the one and I do the other because I like the way it looks more. And then the same thing is for the increases for the, uh, for the heel. She says to do the increase that would go into that direction. Okay. I don't know if they make, this makes sense, but I do the other way. So if anybody, of you guys have knitted this pattern let me know what you think because i was thinking to maybe even email her because i wasn't sure if she meant to do it this way because this is the nicer way i would think than the other way so 
as you can see, you increase from this line. So all the increases come out of this line and they go into that direction. But her increases go into this direction and then you then they will go that way anyway. But it's about the first stitch. So the first stitch is slanting towards this side according to her instructions. But if you knit it into that direction, that direction, then it lines up with the way it's going to go after that. So I think it's, I do them the other way around. So if it says make one left, I do make one right and vice versa. So yeah, let me know if you have knitted the bear paw socks too. And if you understand what I mean, because I didn't want to just email her and say, I think this is better because she's like a super well-known designer. So I would love to know what other people think if there's a reason to do it in the, the other way, because I know for, for toe increases, it just is a matter of what you like the look of more. And I like the look of this more, but down here, I think I did it for my very first bear paw socks that I did it according to the pattern. And then I thought, I don't, don't like the way it looks because it goes into the wrong direction. So let me know if you have any experience with that. Okay, enough about my bear paw socks. I love bear paw socks. <laughs> so um, other than that, um, I have just worked on this project. Well, it is a lot of work. I, I mean, compared to last time, I feel like it doesn't even, it doesn't even look like I did that much, but I did. So I finished both sleeves and I'm doing it a little differently than the pattern because I'm playing yarn chicken and I'm using my Stephen and Penelope project bag. Um, but this is all the yarn I have left for the main color. Um, so I wanted to do the sleeves first to see, uh, to just knit as much as I could for the body. Um, yeah, and what I did was I just didn't follow the pattern at all for the sleeves. I just picked up the stitches, picked up stitches underneath the arm and then uh, continued to stripe and I did one more stripe as normal. So I finished it off with the contrast color. Then I switched to my main color and I just started ribbing. So this is all ribbing. Then I did one row of ribbing in the contrast color and then I bound off with an Italian bind off uh, in the contrast color. So I did that on both sides and I really liked the way it looks. I tried it on. Uh, I'll show you a little video because I took a little video of me trying it on and I really like the way that it fits. I love negative ease. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm knitting a size that they don't recommend for my bust circumference, but I don't care. I think it looks beautiful. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And for yarn management, I also did the inside of the color in my contrast yarn. So yeah, I think I'll have enough for a decent length. So in the video that I showed you, I, I was like here somewhere. So I did add a few more stripes. Yeah. Looks cute. And these are knit on my three millimeter needles and I need those for my camisole number five too. So everything is using the same needles. So nothing is getting finished. Well, not nothing. I did do a lot, but you know what I mean. So those are my whips. And then I wanted to talk about some swatching. So as you can see, I put some things down here also because it looks cute, but also because I have some plants. It has been very, very rainy in the Netherlands. It's crazy. I came back three weeks ago, four weeks ago from my holiday in the US and I got a beautiful tan and it's gone. <laughs> I don't really care about my tan that much, but um, it has been just fall 
here. So early fall in Europe, well, at least in the Netherlands, it's, it has been just a cruel, cruel summer. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I've been thinking about uh, swatching. Um, swatching for sweaters. And I had this yarn lying around. Yeah, you can see the colors pretty well. I tried to make an Instagram story about this this swatch and the colors just look different in every single um, story that I posted. It's like, it's blue, it's green, it's dark, it's light. But it's, a, it's called sea green or something or seaweed. And it's this beautiful deep color, like almost emerald with green specks in it. And still it's hard to see. You can't really see the green that well, I feel like. It's a beautiful color. And I am planning, this is my Sunday Garden magazine called Meek Till Dama or something, Softer Women, Meek Till Dama. And I am planning on making the Guernsey Genser. So there it is. There's another picture from the front. And I am gonna make this for my boyfriend. And um, the pattern is knit with double sunday and thin silk mohair from Sunday's Garn on a four and a half millimeter needle. And I have this Drops Nepal mix colorway. That's why it's so pretty with all the different colors in the colorway 8905. I think it was called something like sea, sea algae or something. Sea green, sea, no, it wasn't sea green or sea blue, but I made the swatch with the stripes, with the um, lateral thingies. I really enjoyed doing that. And I actually haven't, I have blocked it, but I haven't measured if it is correct. And I feel like I just don't <laughs> want to um, measure it because it, there's so many different patterns in this. Um, there's so many different stitch patterns in this pattern. A lot of pattern words, but you know what I mean? Um, that I feel like it's not very representative to just make a swatch with one of them. And it just say swatch in diagram, but there's four different diagrams in the pattern. So that doesn't really make sense, I feel like. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is making the back first, the back part before you add in the uh, join it to the fronts or anything, and then just measure that, block it and measure it. Uh, I think that's the best way of doing it. There's one thing that I want to have different in this pattern. So here you can see the pattern from the side on the shoulder. And I don't like the way that looks. I don't like the way that the moss stitch looks. Um, so you work short rows on the front and then it creates just like a messy look basically. And I feel like Petite Knit did a really good job in her Ingrid sweater, which is a similar looking sweater to this one. And she has like an eyelet row on top of the shoulder. So I'm thinking of solving that with maybe something that looks like this. So this is two rows of purring. So putting that on top of the shoulder um, before doing the short rows. Yeah, that's just whatever is go gone through my mind. Um, yeah, and it's a really exciting plan, I feel like. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna cast it on. There's a lot of sweaters that have been on my mind. I feel like I haven't been uh, knitting that much for summer. And I feel like that's because I'll put it here so you can admire the pretty booklet. Um, I feel like that's because in uh, December and in January, 
we were in South Africa, so we were in the Southern Hemisphere in their summer. So I already have a lot of summer and I just feel like I kind of want to have fall. And right now it's just raining all the time, but it's hot. Like I'm, I'm sweating right now. I'm like a little sweaty. It's like, huh. So I just, I'm ready to have, <laughs> to have cooler weather. I know it, it sounds a little weird. I, I don't know if I, yeah, I don't know. So I'm, I'm kind of ready to just cast on all the sweaters and just work on sweaters for the rest of the year. And my, on my acrylic yarn stash, so. And then another final thing that I want to show you is this yarn. So I have been looking, first I'll tell you what I've been looking at. I saw, oh, what was it called? The Isager Aaron Tweed yarn. And I saw it, I thought it was so pretty. I wanted to buy it, but then I thought, okay, no, I have so much yarn in my stash. I don't want to buy another yarn and then wait again. Like I have beautiful yarn in my stash that I've been waiting to knit up. Um, but cardigan number eight by my, my favorite things knitwear in Isager, 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 um, Aaron Tweed would just be so pretty. And then I remembered that I saw this yarn on Instagram one time. And it's this, uh, it's called Rico Design Creative Make It Tweed. And it was five euros per ball. I'll put in the link where I bought it for the Dutch viewers, if they still have it in stock. Um, and I decided to swatch with it immediately. So I made three different, different swatches and I just used yarn for my stash. So uh, the first one I made was this one, I think. I think that looks really nice. This was knit on a four and a half millimeter needle. And this is where I'm recording <laughs> which needle I use because I'm gonna forget. So this is what I can go back to. This was a four and a half millimeter needle and it gives the perfect gauge for the... Oh, I always mix up Ozetta and Kadri, but it's one of the two. It's the, it is a field day jacket by Ozetta. And the row gauge or the stitch gauge is, oh no, they use five millimeter needles, but I used four and a half. It's 17 stitches. So I think it's really pretty. I used, so I used a, a Tweety yarn held together with um, Drops Puna, which is their uh, alpaca, and one of my cones from JC Rennie that I haven't used for anything yet. Oh, there we go. But the only thing is, after working this swatch, I felt a little sick. And I don't know if it's from the spinning oils or from the alpaca, because I feel like al alpaca kind of, I'm like kind of allergic to it, but not really. Like it is kind of irritating to me. So I'm not sure if I want to work up a whole project using those two. Then I also made um, this little swatch using yarn that I got from Pearl J, Taylor, uh, when we did a little yarn swap. And if you haven't seen her videos, I'll, I'll see if I can link her video up above. But um, in her latest podcast, she also showed the yarn that I sent to her, the Noro category that I made my Mati sweater edition out of. Yeah, so she sent me this yarn, so this strand, uh, of yarn and I swatched and I got perfect gauge for the cardigan number eight. So this would be a beautiful alternative to the Erin Tweed by Isager. And then the last swatch that I made, I um, wasn't super excited about this one, but it's some other yarn from my stash that I had. So that's all the swatching. I feel like swatching sometimes is really good to not 
podcast on something new. It gets you excited about something. It makes you think about something. And then you can just continue your whips. So actually, I didn't cast on anything new. I just cast it on that second top. That was a whip that already uh, was going. So yeah. Um, then actually, there's just one more thing that I want to tell you. And that is that I sh in my previous podcast, I showed you the giveaway prize that I got from Brooke Willow. And uh, she reached out and she mentioned that those stones from the stitch markers that I showed you were in fact found by her from the Great Lakes and she made the stitch markers herself. So that was really nice to um, see uh, and to uh, read about and um, makes it even a more special price. So yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can always watch my previous podcast. Then lastly, I was kind of inspired. So I am watching Eliza OK. Um, she's a YouTuber and she makes uh, a lot of videos about the 52 weeks of socks book. So she, it's really fun to watch. It's like a knitting vlog every, it's like I told you, I really like watching knitting vlogs. So I always watch her uh, sock uh, videos. So she just opens up the book at the start, decides what she wants to knit on, gets her sock yarn out and like chooses crazy colors that you think are not gonna go together. And then she makes the socks and you're like, oh, that's actually pretty nice. And I like color, so if you like color, you should go check her out. She's really funny to watch too, I think. So I watched her videos and then I also watched Brooke Willow's latest podcast. I feel like I talk about her all the time, but I mean, <laughs> you keep referring to other people, right? Uh, that's where you get your inspiration. That's why you're watching this probably to get inspiration. So I watched Brooke Willow's last podcast and then she showed this beautiful lacy uh, sock pattern from the 52 weeks of sock volume two and she was knitting them one at a time or no not one at a time two at a time so two at a time socks using this yak yarn and hold on one second so she uh showed this beautiful yak yarn and in, i think it's the same um base that she put into her giveaway price so this is life in the long grass earth yak in a colorway clove and i thought it's so fun to do an eliza okay style video or just knit them without making a video uh, and then do two at a time socks with the same yarn that brooke willow used because it looks so luxurious and then do a lacy sock from that book because I still haven't actually finished a sock from my 52 weeks of sock book. I started one, but then it didn't turn out to be pretty. I showed them before, it's my Una socks, lace and like crazy variegated yarn together. Mm. <laughs> didn't work out, but that would be really fun. So this is just some inspiration for myself and I, don't know if I'm gonna do it, but I just like to share my inspiration, my current inspiration. Um, so I hope you enjoy uh, watching that too. Uh, and that was all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's been longer than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.